Good morning, model family of God. You know what, Rory? See, that was the perfect length. I didn't get to read your text that you sent me right before I walked up here, but that was the perfect length. No problem. And when you're crying while you pray, that's not a bad thing either. I see what I feel like this morning. I just, we're just going to talk. I'm not really going to teach the way I normally teach because I want to talk to you about who we are and what we're doing. But, you know, yesterday, my Saturdays, like, my life is not the normal time frame where weekends are off days. Saturday is kind of a work day, so my Saturday is normally being a wheel man for Mary and getting stuff ready for the church. So yesterday, that meant multiple Hobby Lobbies. <laughs> so one of my cousins one time said, they asked him, what do you want to eat at this restaurant? And he said, they don't have anything here I like. That's kind of how I feel at Hobby Lobby. <laughs> but there's stuff that everybody else likes. And if you walk around this house, this church, and you feel at home and you see beautiful things, then you see that Mary, Mary has a revelation from God about this place being welcoming and feeling like a home. But as we were walking through yesterday, she picked up something, and it was a little little four-by-four four square. You know, they have the signs that you put all over your house. And it said, right now is the life that you prayed for in the past. And it, it actually said it shorter than that because the sign's smaller. So it said something like, if I could remember it exactly, it said something along the lines of, this is the life you prayed for right now. Sometimes we forget how far we've come. You get wrapped up in what it looks like right this second, and you start forgetting that he has already brought us through so much to this place. And, you know, you put the, put the ad for the park, family day in the park up there. You know... This is, I see something. I, my scripture for the day, I'm going to read you my scriptures and then we'll see what happens. All right? Hebrews 11, it's going to be one through three. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it, the men of old gained approval. That's one and two. Now, three is where I really want to live today. And it says, by faith, we understand that worlds were prepared by the word of God. So that what is seen was not made out of things which are visible. Worlds were prepared by the word of God. I want you to understand something. Your life is prepared by the word of God. It's prepared by the truth of his scriptures, by his word that he has given us. But it's also prepared by those words of promise that he makes to us. I think about this house. I call this church a house because it's God's house. Now, there's sometimes where we get as people and as culture and as people who've never been to church or people who grew up in different churches, when I say church, you think of the building. But see, the church is you. A lot of people have a problem with the institution. But they need to meet the people that make a church a church. And what I've seen about this place We've been here, this will be 
in October, it'll be 44 years. But you know, over that time at this body, I've seen it become a hospital. I wish that I had, I had seen this short phrase that I'm going to tell you, but I heard somebody say, when people come to Christianity, they need a hospital. They need healing and wholeness. But immediately after they're healed and they're whole, they need a family to be a part of. And after that family of fellowship, that's why it says don't, don't forsake the fellowshipping, to get in together, the assembly. Don't forsake the assembling together, especially as the day of the Lord approaches, because it's really important that you have a support structure in Christianity that you're not alone. Ecclesiastes says, if you fall down and you're by yourself, who's there to pick you up? So I've watched over time as God has used us in the capacity of a hospital where people come. Sometimes you may be in here today at this point in your life where today was the worst day of your life and you're at church because you are out of options. You don't see another way forward and you're just might as well try God. Friend of mine, that was his literal testimony. Why don't we try church? We've tried everything else. Some people need a hospital. Some people need a place to belong. We all need a place to belong, but for some of you, this is that place. And this is the family that he's called you to be a part of. But see, the day comes, if we stay at those two, then we just keep circling. And it's very internal. But the family has to become an army that goes out to bring people into the hospital, to make them invited into the healing and wholeness that's found in Christ Jesus and then brought into the belonging of a body of people who love them. We're moving into the army phase, guys. See, when I say we're having a family day at the park, we're gonna have fun. We're gonna have fun together because every time we get together, it's fun. We get together to work and everybody's laughing. I know who you are. And we also, every single time we work or do anything else, we're going to eat because it's just part of the house. Every Wednesday night, we eat together. We fellowship together after. We break bread together. But see, the Lord has prepared you for such a day as this. He has healed you. He has made you whole. He has given you a place to belong. He has put within you a treasure. You've been prepared by his word. To share his word. So we could have had dinner on the grounds. There wouldn't have been anything wrong with it. I don't think there would have been, you know, it wouldn't have been sin for us to eat together. We eat together every Wednesday night. If I thought that was true, then I'd be doing it wrong on Wednesdays. But there's something about sharing this family with our neighbors. That God is very interested in doing. It's his heart. So that's why we're going to go to the park. When we go to the park, it's not just about us. I want you to show kindness to strangers. I want you to invite them and include them and treat them like they're here. Treat that park like it's this house. You can eat, you can have fun, your kids can play. There's going to be, I told Josh, we have to have cool games this time. We have to have like really big fun stuff so that people can see it from the road. John's still in here? See over there? Or about? 
how many days of your life did you sow into outreach? I don't even know. But it's amazing that you came today because the Lord God Almighty is sending us into it in a deeper and new way. And I believe that we've seen, day, we've seen those days in the past. But we're going to love our neighbors. We're going to show the love of God to the people closest to us. You know what? There's some strategy that's involved in this. Next Sunday, we go to the park. Sunday after that is Palm Sunday, and the one after that is Easter. There's some of the people that we're going to be talking to in that park on next Sunday, never been inside of a church. I was at an outreach one time, and I've told you all this, where I was just got to sit at the prayer table. We're going to have a prayer tent. People are going to be able to come. There's going to be candy at the prayer tent. Why? Because kids come where there's candy. But you know what? There's not a ministry place and a fun place. Everywhere you are is ministry. We're made that way. There may be people who will take their kids to the moonwalk who will run away from that prayer tent, but they can't run away from you because when you're standing there with your kids... The love of God is uncontainable in you. Your light is shining. What are you? Who are you? What has he prepared you to be? Salt and light to the world. He's made us for this. I love it. But somebody came up to the table. With, we were at an outreach for somebody else's outreach. And I got to sit at the prayer table. And somebody came up to that table and the guy that was with me said, do you know Jesus? And she said, no. Who is he? Have you ever been in a church? No. You've never been inside of a church, any kind of church? No. Okay. Do you know the, you, have you ever seen the guy that's on the cross that people wear? That's him. That's Jesus. Have you ever celebrated Christmas? Yeah. Okay, well, let me, let's start at Christmas. So, <laughs> and literally, he started at Christmas to explain who Jesus was to a woman that had never heard a word of the good news. She lived her whole life and had kids of her own and didn't know. And you know that there are people that will go to that park who had never set foot in here first. But if they meet somebody that loves them and shows love to them and finds out that, you know what, maybe, maybe there's something to this. Now, the amazing thing about the Word of God that can prepare worlds, this whole world that you're on, it prepared. The amazing thing about it, it can prepare that park for the glory of God to be revealed. So we don't count on just our own ability. We're going to be excellent at what we do. We want everything to be right and in order, but that's not the power. The power is the Holy Spirit by the gospel to transform. That when they hear the good news, the Holy Spirit's already been working to bring them to the park that day. And the presence of God is there because we're gathered in his name wherever we gather. So Jesus is right over there with us, just like he is here. I'm kind of, Rory, you'll appreciate this. I know that when I start talking about this, I might start crying like Rory did.
I believe the heart of God for this house. I believe the word of God that's been spoken over this place for the last 43 years. I believe that the day will come where that castle is so full of kids that we have to add services. I believe that this place was made to be a hospital, but in order for there to be a hospital here, there needs to be people who are made to work in the hospital and bring people to wholeness and healing and disciple them and teach them and raise them up in the way that they should go. And I believe that those kids that are in that castle are vital for the future and that God is using that place to hide them. Another word for a castle is a stronghold. It's a place of safety and security where they can find out who they are. But guys, everybody needs a chance. We all in this room needed a chance. We needed to know the truth. We needed somebody to love us enough to tell us the truth. I've told y'all that I didn't look very Christian when I came here. It didn't matter. I want everybody to get a chance. I want everybody that walks through these doors to get a chance to be loved by God. In order for that to happen, everybody that walks through these doors has to be loved by you. But see, I don't want them to have to walk through these doors to find him. It's not enough. How many places do you go? cover more ground guys it's my heart that the heart of God would be manifested in us so deeply that we can't stand to see somebody miss their chance so when you go over there and you see these families that are enjoying a day at the park. And this overwhelming compassion comes upon you because you want them to know what healed you and made you whole, what changed your life forever. I believe in a very practical gospel. I, I love the deep things of God, but if you can't put the deep things of God to the ground and make it work, we're doing it wrong. I could teach you all kinds of crazy, interesting things, but if we didn't have love, it wouldn't matter. We've been prepared to love. We've been made able, we've been made whole, we've been, I know your testimonies, some of you, I know how far you've come. I know that there's people in your family that can't believe you're here. You know? (laughs) One of the most amazing days in my life as far as me being transformed by Jesus Somebody in my family right before I came to church told me that I was going to hell with my grandfather. And my snappy comeback was, well, maybe you won't be there. That was into an Easter service. And God changed my life in that service. And he has so many lives to change in this city. See, I believe the words that he's spoken over this city. I believe that his word, 
You know, I know that we have always talked about his word being the seed, and I believe that is true. There's no arguing that his word is the seed, but his word is also the plow, and his word is also the harvesters that are going out to do what they're made to do. And Jesus said that the day would come where people that were harvesting and people that were sowing were blessed in the same day. Welcome to the ministry. That time is now. You can see it with your eyes. You can see it when you start, when you go over there, I believe signs, wonders, and miracles will follow. Do you know the most miraculous thing there is? Salvation. That a life can be transformed from darkness to light. From the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of God's beloved son, Jesus, that we could be made one in Christ and never be the same. And that when we do, that love doesn't just end. That's not like you went to a play where it had act one, act two, act three, everybody claps and everybody goes home. See, when you come to the saving knowledge of Jesus, the treasure that he is is placed within you. Inside this body, we carry the treasure of the word of God, the living word of God, Jesus. We carry the grace of God. We carry the love of God. We carry him because it's no longer we that lives, but Christ that lives within us. And when we allow him to live through us, what becomes possible? What can Christ do? By faith, See, at the beginning, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Some of you remember King James, the evidence of things not seen. I believe. I believe the word is true. But I also believe that the word has shaped and molded you to this day where he says, now. Now. New Life Church, in your 43 years, you've never gone to that park that's closest to your church. It wasn't the time, but the time is now. Now, you know, when I say that, we haven't gone as a body, but I know people that have gone over there to play basketball just to minister. Some of the young adults would go over there and play basketball and just get in the game to talk to people about Jesus. But as a body, we're gonna go somewhere together and love people. I have no idea what to expect. It's a little uncomfortable for a pastor. How many hot dogs do you buy for a park? There's Walmart right down the road. We'll figure it out on the way, I guess. I know that Mr. Henry and Mark and Nacho are gonna be cooking hot dogs. Grill's gonna be up and running. You know, I was, I was telling my barber about this and that's how we ended up with free haircuts. And he, he was like, no, I'll come and do it. And then, now, you have to understand something. The first time I went in the shop, I went there a couple of times. I'm just quiet. Third time I go, he said, what do you do for a living? And I told him, and he went, <sighs> why didn't you tell me the first time? I would have, oh. And I said, this is your shop. And he said, okay, so I have a question. Can you explain 
baptism to me because I've grown up Catholic and I don't understand what, what is this? It's just like, and so now I've yet to get them to come to church. They just call me the pastor of the barber shop. I walk in sometimes, they go, hold up, hold up, hold up. Pastor's here, he can answer this question, stop arguing. And they'll throw it at me. What does it mean when? I say, we're doing outreach in a park. We're just, you know, I don't even, I didn't call it an outreach on the paperwork. Because really, we're just going to a park to be who we are. I love the word outreach. I mean, I love reaching out to the people around us and showing love to our neighbors, but that makes it an us and them thing, and really it's all just us. We want them to be us. We want them to know him like we know him and to find what we found. We want them to feel the love that we felt. We want them to find the healing that we found, the wholeness in our relationships, the wholeness in our life, the power of the Holy Spirit, to be led by the Holy Spirit day by day and moment by moment. You know, I know some of you in here are still working through that one. It's okay. He's still at work. He's still here. (laughs) He hasn't stopped. Just because you got saved doesn't mean the Holy Spirit went on to somebody else. No, he's still working on your relationship with God today shaping and moldings, making you like Jesus every day, conform to the image. But I've never seen a day where you just mention something and like, so yesterday my barber tells me, I'm so sorry, I can't come. And the other barber that's in the shop said, hey, I'll go, where is it? I've never met this person. I said, I can get you all the information. She said, do you need more barbers? I said, keep them on speed dial. I have no idea what we need. (laughs) It's a start. You have to start somewhere. By faith, you have to hear from God and do something. Put action to your faith. The world is prepared by the word of God. You know what that tells me? It didn't just become perfect. It became. We're becoming. You don't have to be perfect to minister. You have to be willing to minister. What do you know? I know who I know. I know Jesus. I know who I was before and I know who I am now. I know that the one before doesn't even know what this guy up here looks like. He's like, what? If they could sit in a room and talk, you're going to be what? No. But God knows. You know, we were at prayer yesterday morning, and we pray in here at 10 o'clock in the morning, on Saturday mornings, for an hour. And... Lee said something that was really interesting. He prayed it, but he said that God knew before America was America, God had already established what this land would be. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, he knew you. When a vet said that he's written books about you, his thoughts for you outnumber the sand on the seashore. He has established for you good works for you to find as you're led by the Lord through your life. Do you know you're going to find them? He's no respecter of persons. Do you know what that means? Doesn't play favorites. Amen. It's not a super Christian. There's not if you pay enough money, you get a certain level of membership. Probably shouldn't have said that. But it's the truth. He's the same. And you know that that's part of it. There's some of the people that need him the worst. 
don't have anybody looking for them. Because somebody's made a judgment about them. You're not enough, you're not this, you're not that. I don't know if they'll ever, I don't know, uh, some of you business people, sometimes the gospel gets over into ROI. That's a bad day. That's not how Jesus thinks. What's your return on investment? If you could feel the heart of God, and understood the reverence of God, you would understand how terrifying it is to live there. Because that's nothing like him. He didn't withhold Jesus. I'm telling you, I feel the holiness of God just talking about him in this context. I hear the Lord saying that he is tired of people judging who gets the gospel and who don't. There is something very to give you an idea when somebody like me is in a situation like this, I would love to explain to you what I'm feeling because I like to teach. But let me just tell you how he feels. Woe to you if you cause one of his little ones to stumble, one of his children to stumble or if you don't allow them to come to him, it's better for you to tie a millstone around your neck and throw yourself into the sea. That's not my words. That's Jesus. That's the one who loves and the one who cares and the one who's perfect. But he also tells the truth. God is about to change how people see evangelism. And it's all sitting right there in that word. It hasn't changed, but it just hasn't been seen and known and put into practice the way that it really is. To love your neighbor as yourself means to esteem people higher than you. And there is, there's no caveat on how your neighbor has to act to be worthy of receiving it. I feel the Holy Spirit just it's a clean and deeply reverent have your way in us Forgive us for not seeing the seriousness of the hour.
Holy Spirit, we yield to you now. We yield our hearts. We yield our lives in reverence and humility. We say now. We will honor those you say to honor. And we will speak to those you send us to speak to. We acknowledge that we do not have the power and our ability to do anything. The Holy Spirit I acknowledge that you are here to work through us in a new and deeper way than we have ever seen. And that today is strategic in the history of this church. And no, guys, none of this was written down. This isn't the notes. This is like when in the old days on television it said, we interrupt this broadcast. Bow your heads, close your eyes. God, I'm so grateful for your presence. I've been here a long time, but I don't know if I've ever felt your presence as strongly as I feel it in this moment. I feel like you've truly surrounded us. We say yes to your word. Yes to your plans. Yes to the work. Yes to loving your people. Yes to receiving them. Yes to sharing your heart. We repent, Lord God, for ever standing in the place of judgment. Arbitrating who gets to hear and who doesn't. Who deserves you and who doesn't, God. We lacked understanding. But we repent now, God, because we know how serious you are. About them hearing the good news. God, I declare the heart of evangelism over this house. Which is Jesus receiving those that he died for. For the adoption into the family of his children. The heart of compassion and the heart of love. I have 
no doubt that you are doing your part, God. I ask you to let them feel your presence now in Jesus' name in a deeper way than they've ever experienced. God, that they would know to recognize that if anyone had never been in the presence of God like this, that they would know what they're experiencing now in this moment, that you, Holy Spirit, are here. And because he's here, there's a work of preparation, there's a work of healing, there's all the fruits of the Holy Spirit are being manifested, but also the compassion of God is here for you to be healed and made whole. Because it's, it's not just about those that are outside the house. He loves you first too. He loves you with an everlasting love. He loves to know you and knowing him is eternal life. And if, if you don't know that, you don't have anything to give. God, give us a revelation of that. Unbelievable, undefinable, just beyond our comprehension, outpouring of love. God, wash away all those broken ideas of you, all those broken things that have lied to us about your character and lied to us about our character. We are in you, Jesus. Those, in, uh, those of us who know you are in Christ. We are new. We need to walk in the newness of life that he has given us and share it with all those that he loves and desires to share it with. God, as much as I love to feel your presence in this place like I feel it right now, I desire your presence to expand beyond this place to all those places that need it so desperately. God, you've made promises over this city and I believe them and this city has been prepared by your word and we will see your word come to pass that the city of Houston will be used mightily of God. That out of Houston and this surrounding area, God, will come an opportunity for America to be saved. We will not forsake our part in the harvest. God, we repent for just not seeing it rightly seeing the seriousness of the hour that you've called us to such a time as this and such a place as this that you've prepared us for this and brought us to the now and you've already promised me that we're going to have fun as we go and the most amazing thing to see Is people changed by the love of God. The most fun thing to see is somebody who didn't know it was possible. To see their kids run in the castle of God, to see them in the, the joy of just getting to and God, we run to you like they run to the castle, God. 
I run to you now knowing that we need you more than we've ever needed you in our entire lives and it's the best place to be, God. I don't have to have all the answers. I know the solution. I'm in relationship with the solution. Holy Spirit, you are here to lead and here to guide. And I speak now in Jesus' name that if you don't know him, now is the time to come to know the power of the Holy Spirit, to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, to receive a gift from God is all that being baptized in the Holy Spirit is. If Jesus said it's better for us that he goes away so that we can be led by the Holy Spirit, it's the best thing for you. And he is here right now. He's not far away. If you want, if you want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, ask. Holy Spirit, I want you. If you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit in a fresh and new way. Some of you got baptized in the Holy Spirit years ago. But now you need a refreshing and a filling. Say, Holy Spirit, I invite you. Fill me now. Fill me to overflow. And he will. Not everything that you see and not everything that you think in this environment, you can't process everything that's happening right now. You're going to find out tomorrow that something's different, that he has started something in you, that he will work out through you. He started something in this body, and we're going to see it come to fullness in such beauty that we have not even imagined the, the ramifications of it. Somebody prophesied to me over this house that things would come out of this place that the government wanted to be a part of because it was so effective. That's not gonna be my idea. That's gonna be the Holy Spirit revealing and I thank you for the revelation of the Holy Spirit now, God, that you are filling your body, that you are inundating us with love and compassion and grace, and God, that everywhere we go, it just pours out. We can't contain it, God. You know when you walked in right after they mopped and you can see the wet footprints? Like it's raining outside and you come inside and you bring the wet in with you? You don't dry your feet? Or am I alone in this? The living water is pouring out of you so quickly that everywhere you go it's washing. It's hitting the ground around you. It's hitting the people around you. You don't even have to get close to them. They're gonna feel the presence of God. Out of you will come rivers of living water. Now, out of you are pouring rivers of living water. You're going to see it at lunch. You're going to see it at home. You can't contain it because it's too much. You're not going to want to contain it because it feels too amazing to see God be God through you. To see the love of God manifested through our lives. Oh, Lord. I thank you for these days that we're living in. I want to close with this. We're 
Repentance is a gift. It's a gift of connection, restoration of connection, so that you can be near to God where you've gotten away from him. Some of us need to repent right now. I don't want shaming you or condemning you for needing to repent. I'm just telling you that I wouldn't want to be away from him at all. If you can be in oneness with God and in right standing with him and there's something that's standing between you and him, you need to get it right, right now. Don't wait, don't delay, now. Repent. What does that mean? That's not just saying you're sorry. That's saying I'm going to stop doing it. Not in my own ability, God. I ask for grace over all those who repent right now in Jesus' name. That as they repent, they have the grace to change. To see the newness of life that is theirs in Christ Jesus. I speak it now in Jesus' name. That today isn't just a I'm sorry. Today is everything is different from now on. By faith, we lay hold of the fact that it's already different. And you can walk in a new life. Not just because you come to a place called new life, which is a wonderful thing, but, but because he is alive in you. It's not your power anymore. It's his power. It's not his nature. It's his divine nature that you get to partake of. You get to enjoy it. I'm going to give you a chance to make Jesus Lord if you've never known him right now. You bow your heads, you close your eyes. I can't make anybody do anything. Some of you need to be at the altar. Some of you need to be at the altar because you're intercessors and you're repenting for not interceding. Some of you need to be at the altar because you're intercessors and you're interceding for all those who he desires to to have. Some of you just need to get unburdened and out from under something that's been upon your shoulders forever. Like I was talking to somebody about somebody being grief ridden. It's like grief's been on your shoulders, riding you like you're the horse. No more. In Jesus' name. I rebuke all infirmity. I rebuke all harassing spirits. And I rebuke every deceiving spirit that would keep people from the true knowledge of Jesus Christ. Now, Holy Spirit, we yield. Anybody who needs to come to the altar, come. Anybody who needs to make Jesus Lord of their life for the first time, we're going to pray. Jesus. I need you. I believe that you died on the cross for me. And I believe that you rose again. Jesus, please forgive me of all my sins and trespasses. Give me the grace to forgive all those who have sinned and trespassed against me. I ask you now to wash me clean, make me new, give me the grace to walk and to live your way from this day forward. Because now, Jesus, You are my Lord.